Hello friends, I'm Swapna from Austin, Texas, and I'm very happy to be part of this wonderful event. I'm sure you're all having great time listening to the experience of masters and their words of wisdom. Well, stay tuned. We have more speakers coming who are equally excited to connect with you all. So the format of this session is the speaker delivers his message, and then we will have a question and answer section. I request you all to post your questions as a comment on YouTube, and I will ask the speaker on your behalf. Now, let me bring in our next speaker. He is an agent of transformation, passionate about life, inspiring and helping others to live the life they desire. After a life-altering awakening experience in 2007 and a disappointing end to a 22-year-old corporate type career, he freed himself to devote his time to serving others with his passion for seeking to understand why we do what we do. He immersed himself in reading, training, studying with some of the world's best in the areas of personal growth and transformation, relationships, health, spirituality, and leadership. As a part of Tony Robbins event senior leadership team, he spends his time helping others transform their lives. He is none other than Mr. Mark Caron from Vancouver, Canada. Mark produces Conscious Living Radio, a weekly radio program now in its 12th year, which explores alternative paradigms emerging in psychology, health sciences, community building, education, and philosophies that challenge the modern outlook and the institutional forms that express it. Mark interviews authors, thought leaders, doctors, healers, artists, spiritual leaders, musicians, and many more. He also hosts a weekly program, Wake Up Call, where he shares his tools, techniques, and strategies for creating the better everyday life. He is the co-producer of Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, now in its ninth year. This conference is one of the most internationally recognized events of its kind, bringing in experts to share about the healing, awakening, and conscious expanding potential of ancient plant medicines. If there's one thing he says he learned on his journey of transformation is how to enjoy the ride. He says integrating our experiences and mastering our inner peace is essential to allow us all to live a more joyous, fulfilled and blissful life. He is an active partner and also presents live sessions on PMC Global. I would love to welcome our friend and collaborator Mark to share his message. Being a transformation agent, he will be intensely talking about meditation mindset. Hearty welcome, Mark. Hello and thank you. What a great introduction. <laughs> thank you so much for that. And uh, I understand you're coming from Dallas. And uh, is that correct? From Austin, Texas. Oh, from Austin, yes. It's in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? So. <laughs> That's true. You're right. And I'm actually tuning in here from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, today it's here 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm really excited to, you know, start my day by, by sharing some of the things I've learned in a, a mindset that we can approach uh, our meditation and our lives in a way that, you know, is enjoyable, is freeing, and so that we can live, you know, a life of peace, excitement, joy, bliss, because I believe that's really what, um, you know, what our God-given rights are. And there's no reason why we should really be suffering. And so I'm going to just kind of talk about some of the things that I've learned. And, you know, when we talk about meditation, we talk about mindset, people might go, well, hang on, that's kind of strange. Aren't they different? And I happen to believe they are one and the same in some ways. And it, it's how we then really show up in our lives. You know, we can meditate every day, but how are we showing up in our lives? Are we living our meditation? Are we being that? And how do we show up? within that. So um, that's what I'm going to share today. And I'm really looking forward to uh, the questions and answers at the end, because that's one of my favorite parts. I, I really appreciate and enjoy uh, dialogue and connecting with people. <clears throat> As Swapno was saying is, um, you know, I, I call myself a transformation agent. And it's, it's an interesting term because as a life coach, you know, it's just, it, it's a term and a label that's kind of been put out there uh, a lot. And as a coach myself and being just trained as a coach in strategic, uh, strategic intervention, I, I believe that, you know, we have to be agents for change and creating transformation because it's one thing to, you know, really 
regurgitate information or repeat the things that we're learning and, and have a, a stability around that. It, it's another thing to you know have the wisdom which kind of guides that of which you know we're we're really speaking about. So what I want to do is go down that road and and talk about you know our mindset and what that really is and then how that relates to our meditation and of course how we can in integrate because integration and this is something I spoke of um, when I first met Patrici and 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 Pari at the Cosmic Reset back in uh, I guess it was last August in Madison Virginia and it, it was really quite exciting and I talked about integration because one of the things we do with our organization here in Vancouver is called Conscious Living Network uh, and Conscious Living Radio is our, one of our radio programs. You know, it's one thing to learn something and to have an education. You know, it's another thing to have an experience, which I believe is the best teacher. Then it's another thing to integrate that experience into transformation. Because so many times we can go to a seminar, we can learn something and it's great and then we go home and we just put our workbook back on the shelf we forget about it and in our world we kind of call that shelf help instead of self-help now a little bit about me for those of you who have just been introduced to myself and my work yeah i've just been a, a student of kind of understanding why we do what we do and i've always been a seeker and i never really recognized uh that in some of my you know mid years my early 20s and things but i was always helping people and i've i was actually introduced to meditation transcendental meditation when i was about 15 and you know i, I practiced a little bit i i dabbled i i didn't have a full-on teacher or anything i was just introduced to it and i was fascinated by the things i had learned with the powers of the yogis and what they could do and then I got distracted, you know, being in the Western world, it, it happens a lot where we're very much in our mind. We're about success and achievement and wanting to get stuff done. Um, and, you know, so I went down that road. I thought I should have a good career, a good job, make steady money. And really, you know, these were societal things that were put on me really by my family, by school and by the world around us in the West. And it was really interesting because, you know, as an entrepreneur, when I look back at my younger years, I was the kind of guy, I would want to go cut the neighbor's grass. I would like, I'd want to go collect pop bottles, shovel driveways, do whatever I could to make a buck. And my parents, it was interesting because they didn't like me doing that. They didn't encourage it. They, they actually had a belief system around that that's like, oh, they didn't want the neighbors to think that they couldn't support their family or their children, which was certainly not true. But this was their belief system. This was their mindset. And so it kind of quieted down my entrepreneurial <laughs> um, you know, passion in that sense because, of course, you know, I wanted to please my parents. Well, I got the good job. I, I actually worked for one of the largest furniture chains uh, on the globe and for, for 22 years, great job. I loved it. it. It was something I was able to, you know, interact with customers and have fun doing that. I, I love being able to, you know, help people solve their needs, you know, and, and with the right product, the right place, right time. It was super exciting. And during that time, during that 22 years, I, I was always, you know, started to investigate my entrepreneurial uh, side. And I always loved that big tall guy on the with the big teeth he was on infomercials all the time some of you may know who he is he's Tony Robbins he's one of my favorite teachers and made a huge difference in my life and as I was traveling being a sales rep I was listening and listening and listening to personal development things because I wanted to be and do the best that I can while I was serving my clients and my customers so after you know a couple of years of, of listening and knowing Tony's work and, and finding everything I could, and not just Tony, I was listening to Brian Tracy, Deepak Chopra, John Maxwell, anything I could get my hands on because I just got hungry. I wanted to just keep learning. And in that, um, I finally decided to take the plunge and I attended some Tony Robbins events and I took a deep dive and in 18 months I did everything that he had. And it was my first live event with Tony, and it was Date with Destiny. Now, Tony had told a healing story of his wife. Now, for those of you who don't know Tony, he's well-connected all over the globe with, you know, 
great leaders, thought teachers, doctors, and if there's one thing he believes in, if he's committed, there's always a way to get the outcome that he wants. And his wife would get really sick when they traveled and nobody in the world could help heal her. Now, apparently she was, when she was born, she was pulled out with forceps, she had some frontal lobe damage, so she always got motion sickness. So Tony was actually about to give up and find different ways to do his business because he travels the globe like most of us travel around town. And somebody had shared uh, an experience of something that they had experienced in India um, at one this university. So long story short, they went there for 21 days, did a lot of meditation, ancient Indian practices. One day something shifted in her head and lo and behold, she was healed. She was able to travel, she wasn't getting sick. Everything was, you know, it's like, it, it was a miracle. And Tony decided he's gonna bring some of this stuff back to the people that he teaches. And he brings back and we share a, a chakra dhyana and a oneness blessing, um, diksha. At, at this event. Now, this is something that I found really quite fascinating because as I'm in my head, my mind sets there to learn everything. And he brings this meditation. And, you know, I was in probably the best shape of my life. I was on a plant-based diet, stopped eating meat. I was healthy. I was always learning. And so I'm sitting in this room, it's got about 3,500 people. And this was my big awakening moment in 2007 that I speak of. I was in Scottsdale, Arizona. I don't know, it was probably about 11.30, 12 o'clock at night because Tony goes to about two, three in the morning sometimes. And he share, tells the story and he shares this experience. So while I'm meditating there, and I was not much of a meditator before then, you know, it's something that always interested me, but again, you know, I didn't have time to meditate. And we're gonna talk about that. So anyways, as we're doing this meditation, I'm sitting there in my chair, got my eyes closed and I got my fingers and thumbs touching. And all of a sudden I was getting all these flashes of light in my head, my mind's eye. And I'm thinking, well, he's hypnotizing us. Something's happening out there. So I open my eyes and the room's pitch black. I thought he was flashing strobes and doing things. Close my eyes, boom, 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 boom. Keeps happening again. Open my eyes, nothing. Close my eyes, go back into the meditation. And next thing you know, I was launched out of my body and as much as I can say into the other side I saw what I you know what I saw I can only explain for myself but it was it was really powerful it was just a bolt of light running through beginning to end of the universe I could see a connection from my third eye from my head that was feeding into this mainstream there's all these bolts of lightning into this big mainstream that I saw and I saw entities and things floating around in between not that I know who I was seeing and I you know I'm still kind of in my head looking to make sense of this as my spirit my body is come somewhat disconnected and there was a point where I just really started understanding everything everything that I was having challenges with or that I was looking for resolution and my heart opened up and I realized as I came back into my seat and I opened my eyes the words that came out of my mouth where Lennon and McCartney had it right all you need is love. You know, I understood my parents. I understood my family. I understood, you know, the conflicts I had at work and in my relationships. My heart was just beaming and glowing. And since that day, life has never been the same again. It's just, it fundamentally changed. So that was, you know, kind of the launching pad of, you know, really a, a love affair that I, I, developed for uh, ancient India and, and the practices of meditation, the yogis, and, you know, if we would call it Hinduism and things 5,000 years ago. And I read as many books as I could get my hands on. I read the Bhagavad Gita, some of the other Gitas, you know, autobiography of a yogi, science of self-realization. And these things just opened my eyes to, you know, the powers that we have within us just as human beings. And meditation, is a really big part of that and I also believe our mindset is and our mindset is really how we show up to things and I, I loved it when I met got to meet Patrici last year he actually gave me my spiritual name I don't know if he remembers what it was but it was Madhya 
walk her the middle path, walk her the golden path. And I was like, wow, that, that really kind of explained where I was in my life because I felt myself in somewhat of a neutrality. I could get upset or hated or believe or disbelieve or I could take the, you know, the other side and I would kind of go, ah, okay, and I just kind of always walk the middle. And that's how I was defining some things with some of my friends at, at the time because I was just in this new, neutrality. And when Patrici gave me that name, it, it really landed and felt right. So I was grateful for, for that and I'm just grateful for being part of the uh, PMC Global Society, the, the PMSS Society as well, and happy to be you know, doing our show, The Wake Up Call, um, every Monday morning at nine. Now, that aside, really, it got me to ask some questions and really it's, you know, if we're gonna talk about what is meditation, I think if you start asking, you know, different people, you may very well get some different answers. Yet, the bottom line is it really becomes the same. And before I talk about meditation as well, let's talk about consciousness because consciousness is related to meditation, absolutely. And you know, running a, an organization called Conscious Living Network and a radio program called Conscious Living Radio the question comes up, well, what's consciousness? Not everybody is conscious, not everybody's spiritual. And what I like to do is take the spiritual side out of consciousness um, and, and talk about consciousness at its core, which the first thing is really about awareness. And our consciousness is our awareness. And we can go into the spiritual side of that as well. However, for the purpose of what I wanna to share today, I want us to be aware of who we are, why we do what we do, what's going on, what we're paying attention to, what we're focusing on. Because whatever we focus on becomes our reality. And our focus creates emotion, it creates energy. Whatever we focus on expands. And if we have an awareness on what's going on, because sometimes, you know, we could be having a spat with our partner and we're not paying attention to the good things that are happening, happening right next door you know there could be a flower blooming there could be a hummingbird out there feeding off the flower but are we paying attention to that we're not because our awareness isn't on that and our focus is actually on something else and so this becomes related to mindset as well as the meditation which i my goal is to explain that to you here and, and share with you something that hopefully makes a difference so you know it in the basics of meditation it's really just the act or you know giving your attention to only one thing it could be a religious activity or it could also become just a calm relaxed state it's a serious thought or study or a product so you know you can meditate on one thing you can meditate on nothing you know and this becomes the the beauty of meditation and i love patrici's meditation that that he taught us in Virginia. What I loved about it is it was so simple because you can talk to many different meditation leaders and they can get a little more complicated. I did some uh, Tibetan Buddhist meditations and some green Tara stuff and that was a complicated meditation because we had to pay attention to all sorts of things in terms of color and mantras and the way the light was all moving through. And that was a, a more complicated process because my awareness was focused on so many things to do. And we in the West have this mindset of doing things right. It's got to be perfect. Yet, I believe there's perfectionism in all imperfection because perfection really becomes, you know, kind of a disease because what's really perfect anyways? You know, but, but Patrici, if I remember correctly, and I know he'll correct me if I'm not, but it, he was talking about having your hands and your legs crossed, your back straight, eyes closed, and to breathe. It was just simply beautiful. And then listen to his flute when he played his flute. It was one of the most beautiful meditations I was part of because of that simplicity. And I thank you, Patrici, for that. And it's something that I share with, with some of the people that uh, I work with regularly as well is let's keep our meditation simple. And you know, one of the best ways you can promote your mindfulness in a heightened state of awareness is really, again, with improving our focus and being relaxed. And I love a simple, simple meditation. 
And what I find interesting, and some people will laugh because I, I will tell them, I meditate at some of the most bizarre times. I'll meditate when I'm driving. I'll meditate even when I'm working. I will meditate when I'm walking. I, I love to walk. I got a little dog that I have here. He's my best pal. I'll meditate when I walk my dog because when we do that, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm in nature. I can focus on the trees. I can focus on my dog being a dog, having his sniffs. You know, I can focus just on the beingness and, and being grateful for the opportunity that I have to a be alive on this planet and to experience you know the joys of nature i'm not looking at what's going on you know bad around me and that to me is a joy when i say i meditate when i drive there was a day that i always had a distraction i would literally be distracted by music or radio or tv or friends i had a hard time sitting still and sitting in silence and now one of the things I love most is silence and getting comfortable with your own inner silence. Because when we have distractions outside of ourselves in our meditation, which becomes part of the meditative practice as well, uh, I find it very important that we can just let that go. So really that's my thoughts on meditation. I'm not gonna go deep into the practices of meditations because there are many different kinds of meditations from guided meditations, silent meditations, Vipassanas, the Buddhists have different meditations, different religions, cultures and things have different meditations. And one of, what I've always suggest and recommend is find which works for you. Because meditation, every meditation is different. And, and for me, I love the Indian chakra meditations, the chakra dhyana changed my life and it's something I go back to regularly. So let's talk about mindset because I wanna kind of break them down before I go into a little bit more of the details of the mindset or the meditation mindset. And mindset is simply a way of thinking. It's a mental inclination or a disposition or a frame of mind. It's a collection of thoughts and beliefs that actually shape your thought habits. Your thought habits affect how you think, what you feel, and what you do. Your mindset impacts how you make sense of the world and how you make sense of you. Your mindset, trust me, is a huge deal because it's related to who we are, how we show up in the world, our attitudes, our beliefs. And I think it's really important that we take a look at that because who are you? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? Do you have a purpose where you know who you really are? And in my experience as a transform agent, transformation agent and, and a coach and, and working in the worlds that I do, people don't know who they are. You know, they have an identity that's based around their job or their career. It might be based around, you know, the car they drive, the house they live in, the relationships they're in. Their identity is one of the most powerful forces in our psychology because we will meet and show up as who we believe we are. So our identity belief is a mindset, but it's important to know who we are and how we wanna show up. So if you're living a purpose-driven life, you know, are you living your purpose all the time? Or is that just something that we say and do and then we get out there in the world and show up very differently? And I think that's important, especially for a lot of us Westerners, because again, we go into that perfectionism. We wanna do things right, and we wanna do things well, versus doing things, learning, always you know, making it a process of continuous and never-ending improvement. I know I've spoken to many yoga teachers in, in the interviews that I do, and, and a number of yogis as well, and it's always said that in the West, a lot of our yoga practices you know, are in the mind. Yoga being union of mind, body, and spirit, right? We get in our head, we don't think about our spirit, we're thinking about our body and our mind because we wanna do it right. We wanna strike that pose properly. We wanna do it well. We wanna look the best. We wanna have the Lululemon pants on. We, you know, There's all these things that come around it where we're not actually working on our spirit. I'm not saying that's all yoga in the West, but it certainly is quite prevalent. So when we talk about mindset, we actually have a few different kinds of mindsets. There's three that come to mind, 
And really, you have a fixed mindset, a growth mindset, and a benefit mindset. And this is something that you can apply to your meditation practice. When you identify where you kind of land, and I always suggest wherever you are, let's look to be of the benefit mindset and the growth mindset. A fixed mindset is good, depending on your practices, but I believe, my personal belief is there's a lot more that we can do outside of a fixed mindset that can further transform and enhance our lives. So a fixed mindset is basically, you know, it's people who seek perfection and avoid failure. They focus on reproducing what they know. And they believe their strengths are innate gifts that can't be developed and focused by perfecting or uh, focusing on their perfecting their abilities. So that's a fixed mindset, meaning you have a structure, you have a routine, you want to do everything the best. And that's just the way it is. Nothing outside of that. It's fixed. Now, if you have a growth mindset, these are everyday people who seek growth and development. They focus on improving how they do what they do, and they believe that their strengths can be developed with effort for reaching higher levels of achievement and ability and impact for that matter. You know, growth is something that I believe is important for all human beings and all life. Because when something's not growing, it's really dying. And this is one of the philosophies we use within uh, my personal development world, coaching models and things of that nature. Because as we're growing, as we're learning, we're making progress. That's one of the keys to happiness. You wanna be happy? Keep growing, keep learning, keep making progress. It's really that simple. And, you know, just make sure that your happiness is related to what you want to do. Because if you, you know, picture your model of the world and this is what you want over here and your life isn't like that, you may not be happy. However, if you're making progress from what you don't want to what you do want, you're going to find a completely different level of happiness as you do your work. So that's growth mindset. Now, a benefit mindset, you know, I would even call that a, a conscious mindset or a more conscious mindset than growth anyways. And it's where everyday people seek to be well and do good. They focus on purposefully on why they do what they do. And in my introduction, you know, that's, I was like, I got fascinated by the study of why do we do what we do? What drives human behavior? And these people also believe in developing strengths and that meaningly contribute to a future of greater possibility for the world, the planet, for their friends, their family. And this again comes into, you know, a mindset of continuous and never ending improvement of always growing. But what I love about the benefit mindset is that, you know, we think about others, we're conscious about the planet, about maybe where we shop, what we, what we put in our body, how we interact with people. Are, are we interacting with people that puts their best interest in heart? Are we interacting with people thinking just of ourselves? You know, what is that? But in a benefit mindset, we're gonna be much more conscious about how we show up, what we do, and that what we do has a greater impact, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity and this planet, and really that comes up really to the whole universe. So those are three levels of mindset that I, I think really, really, you know, drive us. And I think it's important to understand where we are. So let's have an example of what it's like to be, you know, of these three different mindsets. So let's say we go grocery shopping at our local grocery store. You know, the person with a fixed mindset, they're going to have their list. They're going to know what they want. They're going to know what they pay. They're going to know what kind of brand. And everything is the same. It's very habitual and very routine, and it's a pattern. And if anyone turned in, tuned into my uh, the first episode of your wake-up call, it's one of the things that I speak quite passionately about because it's a foundation of understanding why we do what we do, that everything we do is a pattern. Our daily habits are a pattern. Our language is a pattern. What we eat, how we use our body, there's patterns to everything. Now, you're going grocery shopping, same store, maybe it's a different person or it's a different mindset. You go grocery shopping with a growth mindset. Well, what would that look like? 
Well, a growth mindset is going to be open to the possibility of something different. Where let's say they, you know, you go into the shopping, you see the little samples, people sampling different products, right? Maybe you might taste something there that's really quite delicious and you want to experiment that or have that for dinner today. That's a growth mindset because you are willing to do something different and, and grow beyond yourself of what you would normally do. You know, you're open to different products, you're open to trying new things, you know, something's on sale, you'll buy it, maybe something's a little bit more if you're interested in it. You know, you're willing to do something different for the sake of growth and expansion. Because if you continue to always do the same thing, guys, in your meditation and your physical habits and everything, you will always get the same results. If you change one thing in what you do, you can change results over time that are, are quite profoundly miraculous that some people would think. You make more changes, it, it, the future <laughs> could be really, really powerfully um, changed in a short order, order of time. Now, so what's the difference when you go shopping between a benefit mindset and a growth mindset? Well, your benefit mindset is going to consider what are you eating? And I know Patricia would be saying, don't eat meat. We want to eat a plant-based diet. And I completely agree. So to me, it's like, are you choosing organic vegetables or non-organic vegetables? Are you choosing things that are locally grown? Are you choosing things that have been flown in from thousands of kilometers away? Are you choosing companies that you support? Or are you choosing, or are you not even being aware of that? Because remember, wherever we spend our dollar, we're actually voting on the companies that produce what it is that we're spending. So I always think it's really important that what is the benefit of where we're spending our money? you know, what we're feeding. Maybe you're feeding other people. You're having people over for dinner, right? What's the benefit of feeding them a, a really healthy plant-based diet? Well, the benefit is some of them, if some of them are carnivores, the benefit of that is you can t introduce them to some really delicious, nutritious, vegetarian food and show them that not everything has to be eating meat, right? So, you know, that would be a benefit as well. But it's how you show up because how you show up affects everything in your life. And if you have a fixed mindset, you're gonna meditate in a fixed way. You're gonna to wanna to do the same meditation at the same time every day in the same posture, 